Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and on this auspicious occasion, I had decided that it would be cool if I would replicate the Orion Exploration Flight Test. Now, the Exploration Flight Test, if you haven't, if you've missed all the PR surrounding this, this is a launch of the new Orion space capsule, which was originally designed for the Ares program, or the Constellation program, to be launched on top of the Ares. But they're going to launch it on a flight around the world to uh, test its systems. So yeah, this is my approximation of the Delta IV Heavy. The Delta IV is a rocket designed by the United Launch Alliance, uh, Lockheed Martin and Boeing, basically. It uses liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen for its fuel systems. Now, the, the, the light version can put a, like five tons, I think, into orbit. The medium version uses solid rocket boosters and that can put about t uh, eight tons, 10 tons, I don't know. But the heavy version basically takes the booster core and slaps a couple of more on the sides. Now what you see I'm doing here is I'm throttling back that center one. That happens part of the way into flight to make sure that it has more fuel left later on to reduce aerodynamic stresses basically. Now, this is made using the real fuels mod to supply the correct density of fuel, right? Uh, there is liquid oxygen and hydrogen in there, which means the liquid hydrogen is a whole lot more bulky. Also of note, from the interior of the spacecraft, everything is shaking around. That's because I have the Kerbal Quake, or the Curb Quake mod, which adds camera shaking during, uh, you know, violent maneuvering, re-entry, launch, that kind of thing. Uh, Anyway, if you want to build this yourself, I will also point out that this actually hit a bug in real fuels, and I only realized afterwards that those boosters had been ballasted down by also containing liquid fuel and oxidizer. So the acceleration profile actually looked really, really, really good until I fixed it, and then it just ended up having too much acceleration. But regardless, once we've jett jettisoned those boosters, we throttle the main core back up, and I'm taking a very, very shallow trajectory because uh, I want to kind of make the, the main engine burn out before we fully reach orbit so we can ignite that second stage. The second stage also uses liquid hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, on top of this, we have the we have a standard Mark 1-2 capsule with uh, Sean, Bob and Jenny Kerman on board. But this is surrounded by the Sumdum Heavy Industries um, service module, which is designed to take the Mark 1-2 capsule and convert it into something approximating an Orion, albeit half of the diameter, therefore um, one-eighth of the volume. The actual Orion capsule is about five meters wide, which gives it a lot more room. It's actually designed for a crew of four. We've just had that main engine burnout. Now, uh, we can afford to leisurely detach these things, which is how they do it in space travel. They don't tend to blast away the stages nearly as quickly as we Kerbal players do, because they like to leave a little more room between the stages so that the rockets don't smash into each other. And that indeed actually happened during the test flight of the Ares, which, as I said, the Ares launcher was originally going to launch the Constellation program. The Ares launcher was a, essentially a larger version of the solid rocket boosters on the side of the space shuttle. And then on top of that, you stacked a second stage liquid motor and, you know, then your payload. That flew once, and there's my uh, there's me jettisoning the side panels there. Now, uh, this is a fully functioning uh, service module in this case. We have solar panels, we have RCS, we have power, we have sensors and everything. But on the exploration flight test, which is due to go up in a few hours, fingers crossed, uh, it is only going to be a mass simulator, which means it's, you know, something roughly the right size and shape with the right places to bolt on hardware, but it's not going to be functional. The service module isn't actually finished yet, and it's, interestingly enough, is going to be built by the European Space Agency rather than NASA. So, uh, the Orion spacecraft with the European service module will be an international mission. Now, it, the Orion spacecraft is also interesting because it's really the first spacecraft in many, many years, decades even, that has been designed from the start to go beyond Earth's orbit 
to go to the moon and potentially to Mars, although, you know, that is a something that is like at least 15 years out. The next test flight after this is going to be in 2017, hopefully using the space launch system, assuming that they get all that uh, ready. Anyway, the plan for this launch is that it will get into a circular orbit. It will make one orbit around the planet. It will leave the upper stage of the Delta IV attached, as I said, because the actual... Um, service module does not have uh, full functionality, therefore it doesn't have an engine or anything. On paper, the service module will give the Orion capsule a delta V of about 1300 meters per second. I'm going to use this upper stage here to do this, and we're going to raise the orbital apoapse to about five to 600 kilometers. Now, we want to make it high enough that we can then come down and land on the other side of this peninsula here, of course. The Orion mission, the EFT mission, is going to take off from Florida, and when it finishes, it will land in the Pacific. So the rotation of the Earth is actually quite important in making sure that this thing happens correctly. So we've made our orbital insertion. It's going to be a an orbit of 49 minutes. It's going up to 555 kilometers out. And on the way out, it will pass through the radiation belts. The deep space, you know, particles that have essentially been trapped by the planet's magnetic field, it creates a natural magnetic bottle, which creates these zones near the Earth, or in this case, Kerbin, full of high energy particles. And those have been known to mess up electronics. So this is part of the EFT test, is that they want to make sure that electronics will survive this. Now, I didn't do this exactly the same as the real thing. What I'm going to do is burn the engine one more time to bring me onto a descent trajectory. Uh, the actual one, well, the actual mission, plans to insert into the descent trajectory during uh, on the initial burn into the high ex eccentricity orbit. But uh, I added an extra one here just to make sure that it comes down. It's more efficient in terms of, or rather, it's not more efficient. It's less efficient, but I come back into the atmosphere with higher velocity, thereby testing the spacecraft even more better than I was originally planning. So a primary goal of the exploration flight test is that they are going to test the heat shield, which is why they're boosting into an eccentric orbit to give it more velocity when it comes back down. As it happens, the Delta IV Heavy is the largest rocket that can you know, launch the heaviest payload that they have available to them. But even then, that's still not enough to get it all the way out to the moon. However, going out to the 3,700 miles or whatever that they're actually planning to do, they are uh, going to get about 80% of the heating that they expect to see from an actual lunar return mission. So it's good part of the way there, but not quite. So that's the, the service module detached. The eagle-eyed might notice a little uh, uh, appendage coming up and over the side of the capsule. The reason for that is that is the the umbilical which connects the capsule, the service module to the capsule. Although it's attached underneath, you don't want any pipes or cables actually running through the heat shield. You want that to be a completely uh, single surface so that there's no holes, nothing to uh, be damaged or let you know superheated plasma in. So the umbilicals actually come up over the side and you can just see there's a little uh, decal which the mod, the Sumdum Heavy Industries mod adds. From the inside, well, things are looking extremely impressive. Plasma flashing past, the planet Kerbin rotating underneath us. The rotation is a result of Ferrum Aerospace performing some sort of... I don't know, I've, I've noticed this a lot in Ferrum Aerospace during descent, that it just wants to spin. Um, I believe that Orion capsule is designed with an offset center of mass to allow some sort of control through rolling it. No, instead I'm just coming straight down, dropping the velocity to under Mach 2. Now we're going to, once we get our velocity below about Mach 1, we should be able to deploy these chutes. Now as part of the whole Orion program, they have been doing a lot of drop tests. They basically load a mock-up of the capsule in the back of a cargo aircraft, such as a C-130, and then they pull it out of the back 
using uh, smaller parachutes and then they will actually test the deployment. Apparently they have had a few failures, but uh, you know, presumably they've got to a state where they're quite happy to trust the capsule in a space flight. There is a two-stage parachute. You have a small drogue chute which comes out to stabilize it and slow it down. But once it gets low enough and the pressure gets high enough, it will deploy three larger chutes. The PR videos will remind you that these are three of the largest uh, parachutes ever deployed. There we go. We can bring up the info. And it tells us this is all using a real chute, of course, which is uh, by Stupid Chris. Very useful pack. It stops your parachutes getting torn off because it slowly deploys them, applying the force gradually rather than quickly. And that's us deploying the second set of chutes. And there we go. We accelerate a little, but yes, thankfully they deploy a little faster there. And about 500 meters up, everything is looking hunky-dory. We're hanging at an angle beneath those parachutes. The Orion capsule is obviously designed to land at an angle as well because that reduces the, the shock when it hits the, the water. This is a technique that goes back to the Apollo program. Hitting the, the water sideways reduces the initial impact and therefore makes everyone a whole lot happier. And we're almost there. Yes, we have successfully returned from our test mission. It wasn't supposed to be manned, but Sean, Bob and Jenny just came along for the ride. So I'm sure we hope the real thing goes as smoothly as this. I believe the broadcast starts around 7 a.m. Uh, East Coast time, so for me that's 4 a.m. So forgive me if I accidentally sleep in. So yes, watch the skies. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. So actually, there was one thing that I did want to demonstrate. Imagine that you have a problem during launch. Perhaps your guidance system is installed upside down. Perhaps you have some problem with your staging and those uh, side rockets come off. No, and things explode. Well, at that, time, that point, it's time to punch out, jettison your capsule and let it return carefully. Well, you watch the vehicle assembly building disintegrate behind you. <laughs> Yes, this was just a test, but I thought the image of the vehicle assembly building going up in flames was worth including in this video. So yes, of course, fly safe.